Welcome, everyone. This is such a fun episode. My name is Julie, in case you didn't know, and welcome to the USU community. I am so thrilled. I hope for those that listen to this podcast, you have to head over to YouTube and you've got to watch this because I am hanging out with the amazing Plant Burger, incredible founders and celebrity chef, chef Spike Mendelson. So head over to YouTube to watch it. All right, before we get started, let me tell you about celebrity chef Spike Mendelson and all of his background. His career has spanned nearly three decades and it can be described as nothing short of creatively diverse. From chef and restaurateur to television personality, product developer and consultant, Spike is a force to be reckoned with in the culinary world. After graduating from the Culinary Institute of America, Spike worked with some of the world's most renowned chefs and restaurateurs, such as Gerard Boyer, Thomas Keller, Sirio Massioni, and Drew Nipperent. So sorry if I got those wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Gerard Boyer. Yeah, I was like, that was not the French accent I learned in high school. Okay. Gerard Boyer. Yeah. After making his television debut on Bravo TV's Top Chef, Spike went on to appear on several other cooking-related shows, including Life After Top Chef, Iron Chef America, Late Night Chef Fight, and Beat Bobby Flay. He also hosted Midnight Feast and Food Network Kitchen Sink. In 2008, Spike opened up the first restaurant in his culinary empire on Washington, D.C.'s Capitol Hill, Good Stuff Eatery. His burger joint quickly became a favorite of political elites, including President Barack Obama. The success inspired a cookbook, the Good Stuff Cookbook, and multiple locations across the country and overseas. Following the opening of Good Stuff Eatery, Spike opened up We the Pizza, Bernays, and Santa Rosa Taqueria. I'm just tired thinking of it. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, Spike. Jeez. All right. What we're talking about today, though, is Spike's newest restaurant, Plant Burger. This is dedicated to crafting and redefining some of America's favorite foods without the use of any animal products. Outside of his restaurant, Spike's popular DC speakeasy, The Shepherd, has paved the way for a second concept called The Morris. In an effort to put his passion for food equity and education into action, Spike began working with organizations like CARE and DC Central Kitchen as a chef ambassador and contributor. His work landed him the position as the first chairman of DC's Food Policy Council. So awesome. He has used his voice to speak out about improving the quality of school lunches and equal access to whole and healthy foods and for the protection of the SNAP program. Spike continues to partner with groups like Food Rescue US and Food Policy Action to make a positive impact on our food system. Spike lives in the DC area with his wife, Cody, and their son. When he's not in the kitchen or lobbying on the hill, Spike can be found surfing any river or ocean that has a wave. Yes. Nice, or hanging with us today. Yay! Woo welcome! <laughs> <laughs> awesome, welcome you guys, it's so fun. And we're also, just for those who listened to the first uh, edition that I did with Jonah Goldman, who is also incredibly gifted and uh, helped to start uh, the marketing director. He's in the video, we're pointing to him. Uh, Jonah's joining us too, so we're really in for a gift. You guys, this is like super duper fun episode on steroids, on plant, Plant, plant roids. Plant roids. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a good one. <laughs> nice. I like it. There's some names for that too. But yeah. So what, like... Jonah just wrote that down. Here, so. Plant roids. <laughs> plant roids. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So I am just curious in terms of, I mean, there's so much here that you've done. And I think for people listening, honestly, sometimes it can be like, wow, like I can't get to there. How did you do that? Can you tell us a little bit about like where you started? Like, what was your initial why? Like, what got you into food? What into food you? in general? Yeah, like what got you into? Food? Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So, so uh, you know, most people I, I guess probably wouldn't realize, but I because uh, it's never in my bios or anything. But but I come from a really huge, like long line and thick uh, background of restaurant tours at Jeff. So uh, you know, my grandfather, my my mother, my great grandfather, you know, was butchers and. Um, you know, my family had famous restaurants in Montreal. Uh, they, you know, big Greek family, still run a ton of restaurants. So, you know, I always tell people I was born on a prep table uh, <laughs> because literally that's kind of how my uh, life has felt 
Uh, I've just always been, uh, you know, been surrounded by uh, the restaurant subculture um, in and outside of the kitchen. So, you know, um, you know, when you think about those kids that like grew up washing dishes, that's, that's me, you know, uh, everyone was like out on jet skis and hanging out, you know, I was, uh, you know, in the slums and the dishes. So it's just, you know, uh, the irony is, is I was so ingrained in the business for, from such a young age that I was really uh, not interested as it for a career, you know, yeah. it's kind of like you grew up watching your parents being the this yeah. business, you're working at holidays, you're, you know, uh, it's yeah. stressful, weekends, you're at the restaurant, it's not like that glorified. Right. So, um, but then, you know, over time, I just kind of found, found that that's kind of what I was good at, so. Yeah, I love that you said you were born on a prep table, yeah. that is freaking born hilarious. Prep table. <laughs> like that's a like a new song. Like a yeah, it's like either rock, Izzy rock, <laughs> or country, I don't know, one of those. Awesome. Um, so for you, I mean, was it kind of a, like, I might as well just give it a try. I was born into this anyhow. You got, I mean, it sounds like it, it you realized it was a passion. Yeah. You know, it, it, it uh, you know, you're growing up, you, you know, you, you're, you're, you're trying to figure out what to do in life. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't the kid that really loves scholastic, you know, school that much. Yeah. You know, uh, I went to actually a military school. Oh, wow. Uh, two different military schools. Because one told me to get out. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Got it. That kind of experience. Yeah, yeah. that kind of experience. And then, um, you, you know, I just kind of fell back to the restaurant. You know, mm -hmm. I just kind of, you know, it was a, you know, it was a little bit of a bummy part of my life. I was just trying to, like, figure out, yeah. you know, what's my worth? What, you know, what what's my reason for being on this, you know, this planet? We, yeah. we all try to. Yeah. figure out what's our worth and and um you know my parents had mentioned going to culinary school mm -hmm. you know uh you know they weren't trying to force it they were just kind of put it out there right and uh, i kind of cozied up to the idea uh you, and figured why not give it a try so you know the deal was i had to go back and work at my parents restaurant for a year and show how like how dedicated i could be to like the kitchen and the work environment yeah and that they sent me to any kind of culinary school so yeah we made that deal stayed at the restaurant which uh back then was called Pepin's it was a fine dining Spanish restaurant mm. um where I learned all the things that you don't want to do in the business and all the things you, you know all the bad things happen in this restaurant uh it was a famous restaurant but like the back of house was like your standard Florida just chaotic lifestyle right and um so then I went to culinary school and then that's kind of where that you know, that aha moment happened mm -hmm. when I was surrounded by, you know, uh, all sorts of different, you know, ages and career people yeah. and, and that were interested in culinary arts. And we were all starting at the same, you know, the same level in school. And from the first day, I could tell right away, I was like, oh, wait a second, like, I know how to make a Bernays sauce or I know how to make this stock or, you know, like just little, little moments like that started encouraging me and giving me some inspiration to be like, Oh, like this is what you can do, you know? Yeah. So, uh, and then from that moment on, I just kind of went, I started going for it. So. Yeah. I love that. You know what I'm thinking too, like to get kicked out of military school twice or once and then Kind of basically like, twice but yes right there's a whole other story on that one yeah the there's a ton of stories on that one yeah right but what i'm hearing too is that you know i would imagine then you said the whole school piece wasn't necessarily for you and i think you know just finding something that you loved that was it, it just sounds like it clicked and you're like yeah. oh i actually really love this enjoy this I'm good at it like let's go all in here yeah well it's funny because it's just like I, I, you know, I always believe, like, definitely now more than ever in my life, I believe, like, to survive in the restaurant industry, whether, yeah. like, that's a server or manager or, you know, a cook or a dishwasher, it takes a certain type of human being. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, just that's kind of, like, wired that way. Yeah. And I've learned this over years just by people that have entered it, you know, a restaurant, I'm like, I don't know if you're going to last. <laughs> you know, like, right. so it, it's it's truly, you know, I think Anthony Bourdain quoted it the best in his book, Kitchen Confidential, mm -hmm. back back in the day was like mm -hmm. it's a subculture like we live in a complete different type of subculture and mentality and you know for some reason you know the, a lot of the, you know the kids or people that are growing up that don't apply themselves to school mm -hmm. or don't see that being like they're academically being something of the future yeah. they, they always kind of resorted you know uh to the kitchens or to serving tables or 
to what have you. So it's always kind of played out interesting to me uh, on how that worked for me in my life that, you know, um, you know, but I found my home and it was in the kitchen and I loved it. So Awesome. One of the questions I'm actually curious about, because I know a lot of our listeners will write in about, we hear all kinds of amazing experts. You really like honed in on your craft to the point where now, I mean, you're the you know top chef. I mean, you're cooking against Bobby Flay, which is pretty fun. And you have restaurants and now, of course, the hamburger. What are you saying to yourself? What are you envisioning? I love to ask, like, what is going on? Because my belief, it's, it's an internal dialogue and game, right? Like, how, do, how did you, what did you say to yourself to keep creating more and more to the place where you are? I think people can learn from that. Um, well, you know, it's like, I, I always wanted to be like a musician or like an artist. Yeah. But I'm not really good at painting or drawing or playing any type of instrument. Right. So, you know, my expression comes through my creativity, uh, through on how I can cook food or yeah. use the planet resources to create stuff you know so it's kind of like you know i got this big canvas yeah. and and you know i use you know my paints and you know my foods and my flavors to kind of, kind of come up with like my masterpieces and you know no one ever you know no one ever only writes one song or only paints one painting right so for me it's like continuously being able to kind of go back to the drawing board and create something new and apply like that creativity that I just want to be able to express yeah. uh, is something that's really, really fantastic for me. It's, it's healthy for me. It's yeah. delicious for others. others. Yeah. So, uh, you know, that's kind of what I love about what I do, you know, and, and um, I've also always wanted to stay ahead of trends and, and even, even kind of create them. You know, yeah. I've always wanted to be at the leading edge of the culinary world and yeah. uh, you know, and, and that's kind of, you know, very evident in, in the way I've approached my career, you know, being that I started off, you know, bottom kitchens, dishwashing, okay. you know, then started going to three Michelin star restaurants and working for big huge chefs and like high level cooking. And then a little bit more worldly kind of seeing all sorts of other culinary uh, points of view, going to Vietnam and, and doing mm -hmm. traveling and working out all a bunch of different places. Mm -hmm. And then like, okay, well now, you know, chefs are becoming rock stars. Let's get on a reality show, you know, like yeah. let's, Exposed that part of it and and food TV and yeah. then it led into like you know the new rock stars are chefs that are thinking about like you know the you know policy you know yeah and, and to, you know so it's like it's a you know I I, I all, always call it the evolution of a chef yeah uh, and uh, you know I think you know the final evolution will be we'll, we'll have a chef for president one day oh my so, gosh, I so love that. you know yeah. and uh, I think Julius Child has a quote like that or something like that where it's like if we could just put the, you know, the nation in, in the hands of, of someone that cooks, woman or man, mm. you know, that, that has a passion for food, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the world would be a lot, you know, the world would be a lot better place, just put like that. So it's, it's, uh, and I may be totally wrong, she may not have a put like that. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds, it sounds really good. good. <laughs> but, uh, but someone has to go out there like that. <laughs> we'll just give it to Just Julia. Google it someone. Julia's just, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, I think it's, you know, those are important things. Just, um, you know, being in tune with the earth is overall what I think is like a thing that we just need to, to kind of bottle up a little bit more, whether that's through food or through other, through exercise or discovery or adventures or whatever it is, just like really kind of like tuning yourself back in, right? You know, mm -hmm. we should be able to know when earthquakes are coming, just like by... Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, next week it's gonna be an earthquake coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm so in tune. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. But but uh, you know. And we're like, no, really, you should yeah. be able to. You should be able to. Yeah. 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 It's true. Well, animals, animals are, you know, animals. exactly. Mm -hmm. We're at the same. Yeah. I um. But we have so many more distractions in our lives. Yeah, totally. So that's what happens. How do you stay in tune? How do you keep yourself um, focused, in tune? I know there's a lot going on for you. How do you do that? I think it's, uh, you know, I, it's moments in life that I just like, uh, it's moments in life that I just I remind myself that like I'm on, it may sound weird and cheesy, but I remind mm -hmm. myself that I'm like on a spinning planet yeah. in an orbit, like with, yeah. and like I'm nothing yeah. compared to what exactly that is yeah. now whether you need to hike to the top of the mountain to see that or yeah. go to the river and surf or spend some time in the ocean or yeah. 
watch National Geographic, whatever it is, you know, just to remind yourself of, you know, that we're just a very small part of, of what's happening. And, and, you know, there's this bigger picture out there. So, mm. and that's kind of what, you know, the, the French have a term for it called the refresher, just like refresh yourself, like, mm. it's like, like refresh your mind. Uh, yeah, love that. yeah, so that's kind of what I do. Oh, I love that. So, I'm just like, sitting here it? watching all these Blue Jays go like <laughs> all over the place. I'm like, they have like something totally going on over there. Like, yeah, there's a party. like there's a podcast out there. There's, there's, a, there's a podcast out there. They have a natural <laughs> podcast, they, 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 and they don't even need a mic or yeah. Zoom. Yeah, we're sitting and watching. For those listening, we're watching. Like, oh my god, I'm seeing. Sorry, it's going squirrel. Most beautiful blue jay. Um, I want to talk about. I love this idea of tuning into the earth and nature. And really, to me, what I'm hearing is just really accessing like flow and creativity. Mm -hmm. And some call that, you know divine source or connection or flow or like your higher self or yeah but you just tuning into that um how did you guys because you know we have this huge plant behind us we're going to talk about plant burger in a minute and beautiful plant so um how did so jonah and like how did you guys connect and then come together in the center which is delicious you guys got to try your plant burgers but yeah go ahead um well so like, do you want to yeah, sure, 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 absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, I think, you know, the, to, I mean, it's, it's funny you bring that up just with your last question, but, it, you know, I've always been uh, a guy to follow, like, idiosyncrasies in life, you know, like, just the, the, these little things that, like, tell you, hey, just go that path. Yeah. You know, just walk down there. Yeah. I, I'm not going to tell you why right now, but just, like, just trust mm -hmm. me, just go down that path. Mm -hmm. And... You know, that was very much uh, the feeling when I met uh, Jonah's dad. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I met Seth on a panel. Uh, I'm, I'm a big meat eater, you know, uh, and uh, always have been. And, um, you know, uh, I try to, you know, over time I've improved, like, on what, you know, what type of meat I eat and how. Sure. Uh, I married a vegan, my wife, Cody, beautiful wife. And, uh, you know, um, Seth kind of snuck these burgers uh in a cooler under my chair on a panel, on a po we were on a policy panel. Mm. Uh, and it was very genuine. He was like, you know, I heard your burger boss, take these home, you know, tell me what you think. And it was just like, that's it. Like there wasn't like any yeah. forceful, like you need to like, you know, look at this product or you need, you know, anything. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that, that, that's, you know, that's really nice, you know? Uh, so uh, I took him back home, I grilled him up for my wife and um, we loved it, right? It was yeah. delicious product, great texture. Um, you know, I've, I had always struggled on trying to throw the perfect family burger party because I'm a burger guy. I eat burgers at home. I, you know, I eat them out. And what's my wife going to eat? So, you know, black bean burgers, this burger, right. and, you know, compost burgers. And they were all like, okay, but they weren't really amazing. And, and you know, I finally bit into something and, and looked at my wife while she was biting into something. And it was just like, oh, wow, like this is indulgent. This is delicious. And I just watched my wife for a second. She was totally like, like you know at that moment just eating a burger you know and and a light bulb just went off it's like well I was like you know I you know, I have to open up a burger place for my wife right <laughs> like so I, awesome. she can't come to this stuff eatery right. uh well she gets the mushroom burger over there but you know like right. something that's you know um you know so the thought was that you know I just kind of emailed Seth the next day and I was like this product is amazing how can I be involved uh love to learn more about Beyond Meat and you know, we, we started just working with each other, you know, mm -hmm. he introduced me to Ethan and um, we had no contract. There was nothing mm -hmm. happening. We just started developing some recipes and some content. And I went to do a Beyond Sausage launch in, in Boulder and my manager was like yelling at me, He's like, why are you doing all this unpaid content? Like, what are you, yeah. you know, you're, you know, the, you're, you're, you're screwing this up, you know, all these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was, you know, a voice in my head that was just like, no, like just go down, just, just, you know, just explore, just do this. And, 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 and the beauty of that is that you don't, you know, you don't put any safeguards in your life, right? You just let things develop. And what developed is the most amazing relationship, the Goldman family, right? After, you know, mm -hmm. Seth and I got to get to know each other a lot more. He started introducing me obviously to, you know, I had met his wife and I had met a couple of his other sons and then we met, you know, Jonah and, uh, just started developing a really good family, you know, like my wife, my son love Jonah, you know, I think it's, it's, it's I've been telling people that it's, 
it's been so just uh, what has it been? It's a little effort, effortless. Yeah. Like like yeah. it's the flow. Pretty much. Yeah, the yeah. flow. Yeah. Like this sure. concept just coming to life, and like yeah. the people coming to bring it to life was just very effortless, and we all just mellow together and there's no egos and we're all in it for the same reasons mm -hmm. um you know and you know our brand ethos is 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 true and we re we actually own up to it yeah. which is you know kind of difficult in this business as a chef is like you know you speak certain things of your restaurant and what you're doing and yeah. where you're sourcing and like a small percentage of that will be true in your establishment because at the end of the day, you have to run a business. Yeah. You have to make money, right? right? And you can't just buy everything locally, you know, right. uh, and have 25 seats, you know, you can't, you know, there's like, there's, you cut corners here and there right. and you have to find that balance as, as a chef. And, um, you know, that's like the constant struggle when you're, you're, you're kind of creating concepts like that mm -hmm. is uh, being true to like what, what you're telling people who you, what you are, right? And uh, this one is just such a pleasure because it's, it's it, you know, what you see is what you get. Yeah. And, and it's, it's right out there and, and uh, it's, it's been fun. So, yeah, I mean, back to the, you know, that time, at, you know, uh, he said, told me his son's on a flight back from Israel and he's coming <laughs> to join the team. And I was like, great, can't wait. I was just in Tel Aviv myself. So this would be awesome. Uh, and uh, we met and, you know, it's just, we have so much alike. I mean, we love, we love being outdoors. We like being active. We love sports. We love food. You know, we love family. So and you have all that kind of stuff in common. Yeah. You know, so it's I'm pretty, like brothers. It's I love crazy. it. He already has two. So I <laughs> the adopted brother. Yeah. brother. Yeah. 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 I love, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking for those listening in, this is something I love highlighting, just listening to how effortless, just following, you said following that voice, following the flow. Yeah. And so many times I think in our lives, we get into what we think we need to do or what we're supposed to do or what that should look like. And I mean, I had goosebumps when you were saying that. This is one of my most important passions is listening to that inner voice. And you are just, both of you, a testament to like, thank you for following it because yeah. that is not easy for many people. Yeah. So you're living, breathing that and like, look what happened. Yeah, I've been eating what's been happening. <laughs> yeah. Freaking awesome. That's, uh, I mean, to me, that, that was so clear when, when I started speaking to Spike about the concept. And we, we had met before um, and visited Vim and Victor. Yeah. And um, I was, of course, just enchanted by, by uh, all of your creativity and the things you've done. And I think it struck me most when we were talking. We had, we had a couple phone calls when I was still in Israel. And okay, yeah. I was kind of going down this path that, that you mentioned like doing what was maybe expected of me and, and caught up in a job that I wasn't really being fulfilled. Uh, and just speaking with Spike, we, you know, we're speaking, I'm in Israel, he's in Maryland, he's in Virginia and like just immediately hit it off. And all of this creativity started flowing. We started talking about, you know, the marketing efforts and getting the seed packets into kids' hands and reconnecting people to agriculture and to where food comes from and the beauty that is the burger. And, uh, and, and trying to bring, you know, what's so beautiful about Spike mentioned earlier is it's really, it is art. He's an artist. He's like yeah. creating food art. And, um, and the masterpiece is something that you can put into your body. You experience it, you taste it, and it becomes part of you. Yeah. Um, and so that was really the moment for me where, again, back to the flow. Like I, I was speaking to him and speaking also to Ben and to the rest of the team. And um, I think when you tune into that that intuitive feeling of this is the right path to explore, everyone on this team is is phenomenal, and we're doing it. We're all connected on why and how, and uh, go down that path, and it'll lead to mm. to a good thing. Yeah. Amazing. What do you guys envision for Plant Burger? Like, what, I mean, I know for me, I'm like, I travel a lot. I'd like them to be in every airport. Yeah. And just <laughs> my order in now. Like, if you yeah. could somehow get especially in BWI, in um, Arizona, <laughs> and, and Austin, yeah. or the three of them in a lot in California. LAX, could you like do that please? Yeah. <laughs> do, you have, do you have plans to expand, and what's the vision? Yeah, absolutely, you know, we, we, um, we know we have something special, yeah. just from, you know, from proof of concept. Um, we have great partners within Whole Foods that have supported this proof of concept for us, and have been like really, leaders in the space uh and um 
you know, you know, again, very, very supportive. Not only uh, have they really held us accountable to our sourcing, uh, which we're Whole Foods approved, <laughs> everyone, yeah. you know, uh, because they take their sourcing very seriously, right? And um, so to be able to kind of piggyback on like their, their standards uh, has been invaluable to our concept uh, because like we, we just said, like, we're, we're the real thing, you know. Yeah. This this burger is is the real thing, you know. It's it's Whole Foods approved. It's kosher, no GMOs. It's got it's got all the things that you're looking for, and um, you know that for most people are looking for, I guess. And uh, you know, so we're gonna stick with working with Whole Foods for a little bit longer. Uh, obviously, they're they're very happy with us, and we're happy with them. So, you know. Um, we're going to spend the next year just kind of opening up some more Whole Foods locations. Awesome. And uh, we'll, we're going to probably roll out a food truck too uh, and uh, make sure we, we do some rounds here in the DMV and pop up at a, at a food festival or a music festival or what have you. But I guess the greater goal is to make sure, like, you know, don't get us wrong. Like, this is a global concept. Yeah. And in in the way we look at it, this is something that is not just United States. This is, like, yeah. everywhere. Uh, and everywhere pretty quickly too. Uh, you know, I, I don't think we need to, you know, I think at some point we'll, we'll turn on the burners and have an aggressive, uh, yeah. approach, but you know, I, I think at so it's so young in its stage and yeah. had such great response and success that you want to be wary of it and you just want to continue, you know, you want to, you don't want to mess with that too much. So we're, you know, we're, we're doing due diligence and more importantly, we're, we're building the, 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 the team, yeah. you know, that's where we're we're doing right now we have jonah you know obviously uh, mike coletti which is not with this at the restaurant cooking burgers right now but he's uh you know one of uh <laughs> he's probably snoring right and thinking because uh, <laughs> we're not open yet but uh you know it, you know and we're just bringing some key members because we know what we have and we're, we're excited and we want to build the team and build it strong um so that's kind of right basically what we have going on yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, to add to that. Like, no, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think that that touches on the key point of um, the planet burger side of it, right? Mm -hmm. There's a plant and a planet burger, um, and I'll just also add, like, this is such an urgently needed concept to spread. Yeah. Um, and we know how uh, how we're in a climate emergency, and we simply cannot go about creating food the way we have been and feeding people. Um, you know, animal-based protein in the same way and in the same quantities that um, have been historically, you know, practiced. So uh, the way I see it, and, and we've actually, we have some numbers and we can quantify mm. how much water we're saving with every burger, how much emissions we're saving, how much land is being uh, saved. And, um, and so back to the idea about Whole Foods, you know, they're, they're always been a leader in the natural food industry. And that's kind of the next evolution, right? Is how can we democratize this movement for everybody? Um, and we want to make it accessible. We want to be there for every community to take part in the plant-based movement, which is, you know, reclaiming our food system, reconnecting to where food comes from, um, and our food security and our health uh, is so, you know, vitally connected to um, to agriculture and to uh, to plants. Ultimately, it all it all starts with plants. Yeah. So um, which goes back to Mother Earth. Yeah. 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 I so. love that. Yeah, I think we need, oh gosh, every, people know this, when I travel everywhere I go, literally I was on a um, military base teaching in um, Pearl Harbor and I only ate at Whole Foods. Yeah. So I'm like, could you guys go to Honolulu and could you go to, Whole Foods is, uh, is, a, is a great partner. We just need to, I think we need to put Whole Foods in the airports now. Yeah. There we go. You spend a lot of time in airports. I I'm in the airports a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I am curious, it's actually interesting, really quick, I noticed the logo when you're saying global, it actually just occurred to me, I'm sure you thought of this, it kind of looks like an earth. Was yes. that part of the, did I, I'm like, Absolutely. did I pick up on that? Our, our just, part of it, it's a yin yang. It just hit me, it's I'm like, burger, oh my God, it's a burger. Sunset, it's a burger. Sunset, it's, it's earth. You got the buns here, red onion, uh, the, the, the red onion, uh, onion. you know, little lettuce. <laughs> There we go. Well, all the things up here. I got some muscles. Yeah. <laughs> Jonah's muscles. Nice, yeah. yeah. nice. That's but, good. But yeah, so the idea was, is, and, and by the way, our, our branding team did absolutely amazing. It's amazing. Uh, the t uh, what's the Ta app? Taco Design Co. Yeah, yeah, mm. Taco Design Co. And um, you should go check out their website. They, they do a fabulous job. 
Um, we'll have that in the show notes. Yeah, and they they really, you know, they there was like five of us at the table, and they really took everything that we said mm-hmm. and and just kind of recycled uh, a mm. beautiful logo for us. And you know, it's supposed to look like a sunset or the rise of something new or a planet or the flow that we were just talking about. Yeah, you know, beautiful. just go with the flow. Uh, so yeah, we're really happy with it. Yeah, but you know, it's it you know, logos and and brand is is very important those are the things oh, yeah. that become iconic you know yeah. look at the golden arches you know and i think we have something totally. pretty, pretty similar so, so the kind of the people, yeah, people come up <laughs> and they're like where are your other locations yeah because there's no way that you have this beautiful yeah. design and they're just a single shop yeah. and yeah. um so we're flattered by that and, uh, yeah and it just goes to show how what a great job they did can I add one piece to it? Just, yeah, just what you guys said. I think what people were resonating with is the authenticity. Is yeah. what you said. What you don't have to. There's no covering anything. There's like what you say is what you are. Yes. So I really think at a energetic level, at a level of just we're humans and we can perceive and sense. It feels you can feel that. I mean, I remember right away when I went in. I'm like, what is this? I, I mean, I literally, you know, I spent times a day (laughs) which maybe you should back off a little bit it's just so real and it's your you're really what your what your ethos is what your goal your visions your purpose your values it's you can feel that in your logo and your in your materials and the whole eat the change which by the way is so brilliant yes and gandhi would agree (laughs) (laughs) yes that is as Jonas struck it, brilliance. That is brilliant. But it wouldn't have happened. It wouldn't have happened if we hadn't right. had those conversations. It's true. Yeah. We we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll get into these talks as a team and, yeah. and synergy. Exactly. You start talking about yeah. one thing, and then all of a sudden something yeah. clicks, and you have another idea, and then you push it to the next okay. level, and then all of a sudden something beautiful comes out of it. So yeah. So awesome. I know we have to wrap soon. I just one thing I wanted to ask was around the policy work that you're doing, and I, I know when we were talking in the intro about. I have a thing about lunches for kids. Um, it is, you know, my kids go to a nice private school and I still think there's a lot of room for their lunches to be better and yes. healthy. Um, and I, you know, this is a whole other conversation, but I'm curious, how do you start to change policy and implement change there? I guess it sounds like that's important to you. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think we, I mean, we have, we still have a little time, so okay. you're, you're good. The, the, um, I think the, uh, What's been very interesting that I would have never predicted in my life, well, one, going to the plant-based concept for sure, yeah. but diving into policy, food policy was something I never expected in my life. Mm-hmm. And, um, but although I feel like I was, from a young age, I was always doing food policy, but just not defining it like that, I right. guess. Like I was always like doing something, like whether it's like building schools for kids, you know, street kids to cook at, or right. what, it was always something. Um, but in DC, I was really able to kind of double down on that, and, and uh, you know, I, um, the thought process there was that I I was just overwhelmed by the amount of support that I got from the community of DC, and you know, I would sit there and hamburgers out and pizzas and tacos to everyone, and I would have these conversations with the young staffers or senators or governor or whatever, you know, and we have we have everyone come to the restaurants up there. And it always seemed like, you know, especially the staffers, the young kids that were spending money there, they always seemed like they were on a mission or they were there to do, mm-hmm. to change the world. Mm-hmm. And over time, like every, every time when I have that conversation, I was, you know, I started saying like, well, okay, well, what am I doing to kind of change the world? Or, you know, how can I kind of give back to the community? And that's kind of when I started getting involved with, with like some, some local groups, uh, DC Central Kitchen, mm-hmm. Horton's Kids, which was an after school program in uh, Anacostia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then really become, you know, becoming part of uh, Michelle Obama's Let's Let's Move uh, campaign, mm-hmm. which was specifically for, you know, call to chefs to help reform uh, the way we look at school lunches. Yeah. So, uh, we, you know, I literally adopted, a, you know, a couple charter schools in the area and I started doing, you know, demonstrations there and uh, going to rooftops and planting, you know, planting some greens and, I was shocked on, you know, uh, how many kids didn't really know where their food comes from. Unfortunately, it was really sad. Mm. Uh, you know, well, you know, where's chicken come from? Well, you know, uh, Safeway, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, yeah. uh, funny, <laughs> but, but very, de- you know, yeah. very de- you know, kind of depressing. And, uh, and then doing some more, you know, digging, you know, I, I felt that it really started at the household, 
you know, yeah. the lack of education from the, the generation previous that didn't have the time to kind of really right. be part of the food system. So, you know, for me, at that point, I really wanted to have some change and I went to some, some boot camps. I went to a, uh, a boot camp uh, that's uh, sponsored by the James Beard Foundation, mm -hmm. which is a Chef's Ac Chef Action Network. And mm -hmm. the idea of that group was to um, leverage chefs and uh, some musicians together uh, away at a boot camp to teach them and, um, you know, equip them with the skills to drive policy yeah. in their local community, whatever it was, whether it's sustainable agriculture, urban farming, what have you. And, how, you know, and the notion was is that hey, humans trust chefs because they eat at the restaurants. So innately you trust us because we're cooking for you and we're yeah. feeding you something, you're putting inside your body. So if we come out and talk up on behalf of food as our client and farmers as our client and like the system, that we'd be able to have like effective advocacy, uh, especially towards the farm bill. And uh, that kind of clicked for me. Mm. And so, you know, I had had a, a really great connection with the mayor's office this entire time, but I hadn't been leveraging it. Mm. Been eating at my restaurant, coming for brunch and like favorite brunch spot. And uh, it finally clicked to be like, oh, just why don't you, why don't you try to formalize this a little bit more? And, um, you know, I found, found out that she was working on a piece of legislation that was uh, the Food Policy Council, mm. which came out of Mary Che's office. And uh, basically what that was is, uh, you know, uh, legislation that was written to concentrate on um, food deserts, mm -hmm. uh, sustainable agriculture, urban farming, and small businesses. Um, and, you know, I met with the mayor's office and they, they gave me the, the chairman position. And so then I was kind of challenged to putting in a group of, uh, of heavy policy people together, a council of 12 people. And the awkward part about that was that I instantly went from like <laughs> interviewing dishwashers to like interviewing the Harvard scholars. And I was just like, wait a second, I'm like way out of my element here. Um, but that was, uh, you know, that was about three years ago. And now I could tell you that our food policy council is amazing. We're having such great, you know, effective change we're writing new legislation to kind of combat some of the hurdles that like help us from having an equitable food system for all. Uh, you know, food is often, you know, I tell Jenna, like, you know, uh, it's treated as a privilege. Yeah. It should be treated as a right. Mm. Uh, so one of the main things we're concentrating now is the grocery gap in Ward 7 and 8. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that's also because they have the worst school lunches. Not that the private school doesn't have yeah. an improved lunch system. Yeah. Uh, but you, you know what your child eating is not even compared to what no. maybe uh, another child doesn't even have in some no, of those totally. some areas so but that's but that to say that the whole thing needs to change right just the way we we look at at food in schools is completely wrong i think it really should be um part of the curriculum yeah, just absolutely. like the social studies like you need to have a class on food and farming Absolutely. and where it comes from and yeah. policy and the farm bill. And you need to learn about this and it needs to really be ingrained yeah. into the young generation system. And then they, they need to grow up with that awareness so they can pass it on to their kids. And then, then we have, we'll have that effective change that we need within our food system. And, um, and then we need to like get out of the bad habits and let, let, let you know, st stop these monopolized businesses from providing that school lunch, you know, break, break the system a little bit and then rebuild it a little bit better. Yeah. Um, you know, because again, I think, I think this is something that's so bipartisan, like yeah. kids should have a healthy meal. Yeah. You know, Can't, like period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. At, 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 at yeah. home, at school, yeah, for we sure. should, you know, food should be for all and, and, and we shouldn't make it uh, a politicized uh, engagement. So absolutely. Mm, that's really well said. Spike actually was yeah. speaking uh, at a rally. Oh yeah, that's just two weeks ago. Yes. for defending school lunches. Yeah. Um, there's a new piece of legislation that aims to nice. take away uh, school lunches, which often, for vulnerable populations, are the only meal that yeah. they can rely on. Right. Um, and he spoke beautifully about it. This, you know, kids can't learn if they're not being fed properly. If you're not nourished, you're not going to be concerned about you know getting a good grade. You're you're yeah. wondering where your next meal's coming from. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about all the high food to serve and yeah. the foods that we serve our kids and like, hey, you need to retain this information that we're telling you right now. Uh, but what, what do you mean retain, you know, like yeah, they're right. just, you know, so it's like, and then they crash because they're tired. So it's just not good for the system. And, yeah. Um, 
but you know, lots of work to do on that, but I think we'll get there. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it, it's small strides. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely, I'm like, I lost her. I'm like, I'm behind that. However I can help. Like that is so important. It affects everything. I mean, I think there should be a class on how to stay in your flow state. Yeah. How to trust that. That's what love, I'm pushing love for. Love flow state. Yeah. Class. That's good. Yeah. We need that. Well, as kids, we have that early on until we're told that that's not logical. Exactly. So I'll join you and I'll just add in the flow state. Yeah. Yeah. Nice like <laughs> My kid is living proof of <laughs> He's in the flow state. He's in, He's the, in the flow state, state all <laughs> the time. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Any last just words of wisdom or thing, anything that um when you think about kind of what you know, I, I like to ask the question about your why, right? Like for so it's it's three years, it's five years, it's twenty years down the road. Like what's what's your why that's driving you at this point in all that you're doing? That's not a small question. <laughs> That's not a small question. Um, Just, well, or whatever you'd like to share. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's like, you know, my why is, is always like, I, I never love answering that question without saying it's self-fulfilling, mm -hmm. you know? I think you also have to be pretty, you know, realistic that people do like praise and they like accolades and they like being yeah. involved in something or being part of something. And yeah. like, for me, it's very... Not that I'm into the outguys. Maybe I said that wrong, but it's self fulfilling. Like I feel that, like I, I, um, if I don't wake up in the morning and have some some stuff to tackle uh, yeah. and stay creative, I just won't operate as well. So first and foremost, the why is like I just I want to stay operating. I want to stay keep staying involved. Yeah. And then you know, most of the standard answers are like I, you know, I have a, I have a three year old, and and yeah. you start to look at at the world a little differently and and you know you you start to think about other three-year-olds and the lack of opportunities that they have compared to your child and and how that is fair and it kind of makes you bummed out that there's like countries that are fighting and kids are like growing up with guns and it's just like yeah. it's just like there's just a lot of bummy stuff out there yeah. right when you think about it so you know whatever i can to kind of like make things better or or bring awareness to things that i'm doing or not that, you know, not anything that I'm doing specifically in my life is going to change the way the world works. But, you know, I think if we all make our small efforts, I think we can have really a global change. Uh, yeah. And we just need to all be on the same page about it. So. Beautiful. And you are, you are. Yeah. To be, to be yeah. Quite honest. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. You. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But listening to that inner voice, I mean, look where it's taking you. Yeah. And we're just getting started. Yeah. 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 You got a long time. Exactly. Here. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Keep following you. And and I think yeah. what you said is is really um, at the crux of what Plant Burger is doing. It's yes. we're creating yeah. a better world um, for Ace and for for the younger generation. Um, and that's really, I think, the vision is. Uh, 20 years down the line, what this business is aimed at doing is creating a more just and compassionate and plentiful food system for everyone um, and a world that's inhabitable and understanding and respecting yeah. ecology and the ecosystem services we depend upon is at the core of this business. And, um, and so that's our, our vision, I think, as if I can just speak yeah. for Plant Burger, it's about um, understanding ecology, applying the principles of ecology to economy, right. and uh, and then you know using using every inch of um, our space and our tiny 110 foot kiosk to spread yeah. these burgers <laughs> as much as we can, using every ounce of our energy and power to uh, to create something that um, will last and will have uh, you know ripple effect and beneficial repercussions for the communities. That we're in yeah i mean and you know what jonah just said is is spot on and and just to back them up even a little bit more is just think of just take for instance think of like a handful of fast food change uh let's name a couple uh wendy's burger king mcdonald's, McDonald's carl's jr checkers okay that's enough uh, yeah right <laughs> yeah. uh and Respect to those businesses, they came in at a purpose at yeah. a certain time, and they've revolutionized the industries in so many ways. But imagine the effect that those companies have had on uh, on our on our food system, right? And our diets, uh, and 
you know, I don't never like to throw blame. I, I always tell people what, well, certain things in history come at a time because that's what the need was, yeah. right? But the need now is to kind of like go back to the way we used to look at our food system. And if we can create a brand as powerful as any of those five that we've named, and if other brands decide to jump onto the same mission statements, right? Then imagine we have five different brands that are completely about the planet and about you know, the food system. And at that point, if we get there, I think then we'll have some really good effective change and we'll have, you know, we'll have big money as well to have effective change, right? Because a lot of it is about money. So yes. if, if our money is supporting the planet, that's kind of what we want. We want all the money in the world if it's supporting the planet. Absolutely. It's right? the win-win. Like, yeah, win. it's the win-win. So it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. No. 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 It does not have to be. Well, look at nature. It's abundant beyond anything. I yes. Would say. If, you want any, if you want any indication of how we're supposed to be living, yeah. just watch what's up there. Yeah. Yeah. Which we've been doing. Yes. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I just think I saw a red. What's that red bird? I just, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's uh, a red blue jay. Oh like, my is gosh. That like, oh, there's red headed woodpeckers going on. Oh, that's there. what it was. It was a, it was a, it was a woodpecker. Yeah, my mom has a book, so uh, we can reference it after. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, so fun. It's beautiful. You, you just thought, you know what we need to do? Is we need to take this Beyond Meat cow here and do like a little <laughs> ET. <laughs> oh, we're planning Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. That was great. I yeah. love it. Yeah. I love it. You guys are awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. This was, um, to be honest, I have like 5,000 more questions, but yeah. we're going to, we're going to cap you it can do there. part three, part four, part four. Part five. When you're in like <laughs> global, we'll do one there. We should do one in like Paris. Yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be great. Well, All Jonah's right. going to Paris soon. So. Yeah. When you're, when you stake it out. Let me know. Oh yeah. Oh, one more. Can I just do one more? Yeah. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. So, uh, the January <laughs> is coming January. up. Um, as 2020 approaches, you know, a lot of people want to make a resolution to live a healthier life or a more ecological uh, or environmentally sustainable life and diet. Um, and so to help everyone transition to plant-based living and plant-based foods, um, we're doing a promotion in uh, coordination with Follow Your Heart Cheese. And all of our cheeseburgers at Plant Burger are going to be half price during the month of January. Um, so it's going to bring down the price to around three seventy, three eighty. Um, wow! And so you can get a delicious, you know, cheeseburger at Plant Burger um, for half price, and uh, it's going to be yeah, it's going to be fun. And be and and, so awesome. and that's uh, in collaboration with Follow Your Heart. Yeah. And uh, which are awesome. But and for those who don't know, go check them out. They've been so around good. for like thirty years. Really? Like Fifty years. 50 years. You're kidding? No, they've been yeah, 50 years, right? Yeah. yeah. They've been around for 50 years, uh, like basically, you know, like calling this plant-based movement. Wow. Uh, and get on them because now we're all using their amazing products yeah. to create our amazing products. So, um, yeah. but they were really ahead of the curve. So great story there. If you guys are interested, yeah. have him on the podcast. I'm like, their okay. name is the story. It's like they followed follow. their heart and I'm like, I must. led to something amazing. That's yeah. amazing. Their cheese is, I mean, this vegan cheese is amazing. It yes. melts. I mean, it's like. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. totally amazing and the price point i'm like i'm already there off at getting <laughs> cheeseburgers i'll be there every day yeah. Yeah. Every day, Jenna. um thank you guys so much this was thank you, awesome awesome really grateful for who you both are honestly just you know i think of the uh, definition of namaste which yeah. is the uh you know the divine light the flow in me honors it in each of you and you're clearly you're just living breathing who you are uh, who you say you are and being a force for good and a change and um that's my that is what i'm about and i know everyone listening got massive value awesome. and everyone has to come try it right now you're in whole foods in silver spring yes mm -hmm. but it's going to be going to other whole foods at some point yes we'll be in uh look for us in dc soon with a couple See? locations yes awesome. awesome um thank you guys for who you are and what you're doing and what you're serving we're just, How you're serving. We're just getting started <laughs> and they're just getting started. <laughs> getting started yeah awesome thank you guys so much thank you